Read my lips. Fasting will bring you absolutely no benefits unless you pass these three metabolic tests. That's what I say to my patients when they come in fat, sick, and fiercely determined to improve their metabolism and their health. They hear me talk about the ketogenic diet and they wanna dive into the deep end by embarking on a fast straight away. I beg them not to do this route. I don't doubt their willpower. I know fasting will do nothing for this patient without these three prerequisites. Number one, be keto adapted for eight weeks before you fast. The difference between starving and fasting is how efficiently your body switches between these two fuels, glucose and ketones. Glucose you can do all day long. It's the ketones you need to practice. If your body can't produce those ketones, you starve. And those ketones are made from strings of fat inside your liver's mitochondria. Practice making and using ketones for a minimum of eight weeks. And this sets the stage for a successful fast. <laughs> this means that you're actually peeing ketones. Measure for success because your body will get used to flexing between these two fuels. Number two, stable, time-restricted eating window. Fasting stresses your metabolism, and that's a good thing, but your body must be in shape for this workout. Step one is to restrict the hours you eat in a day, time-restricted eating. Keto adaption naturally promotes eating less often. Take, for example, this slide. The patient here is eating three times a day, and their eating window is more than 12 hours, maybe closer to 15. Once they went keto, they were able to drop that middle meal, but they were still eating for many hours in the day. Squish those meals closer together, like within eight hours, and then stay there for at least seven consecutive days before stressing the metabolism further. You level up when you have fewer hours in your eating window. Your ability to stabilize these baseline metabolisms where you're stressing your body a little bit every day will determine your fasting success. I recommend squeezing your eating window down to four hours before fasting. This is the kind of stress that the body can adapt to over time. Fasting before training leaves no time for metabolic adaptability. So here's an example of a patient who was using a fasting time to enhance their metabolism. This patient is healthy. During the non-fasting days, they continue to use a time-restricted eating and they're on a ketogenic diet. During the fast, their blood sugars went down while their ketones surged and rose to the occasion. They provided plenty of fuel for this patient. On the days where they weren't fasting, that time-restricted eating also surged their metabolism when the sugar levels grew sparse and the ketones came to the rescue. You can compare that to a patient who was not prepared for their first fast. They went from a standard American diet to a 72 hour fast. And even though their sugars lowered during the time of the fast, their ketones barely got above 0.5 during those 72 hour fast. And on the other days when they were eating normally, their system was not in shape for the challenge. They may have had some health benefits during that fast, but they left a large percentage of the improvements to be desired because their body wasn't in shape. The third test, I asked patients to do a 72 hour sardine fast. Yeah, I pushed them to do this before pushing them to do a water fast. Instead of fasting without food, fast without carbs. There are a lot of 72 hours without food in a 72 hour water fast. Practice using those coping skills while eating nourishing food like sardines. This is a brilliant litmus test for your preparedness to take on a real fast. Fasting with water and salt only advances your health when your body is primed and ready. I don't script the menu for my patients on keto with the exception of sardines. I explain why sardines are ranked my top number one keto superfood in the next video. Click on the box here to watch that.